Hello, I'm Claire, the Learning Coordinator at Leeds University Library Galleries. As someone who also creates portraits, I decided that I will share with you a portrait of Edmund Goss, painted by John Singer Sargent in 1886. This artist had an international reputation. The sculptor, Auguste Rodin, also one of Sargent's many subjects, referred to him as the Van Dyck of our times. Admired for his insights into the subjects of his portraits and his brilliant use of light and colour. How did Sargent come to paint a remarkably punctual critic, poet and author? Edmund Goss claims he walked on a hot summer's day into a farmyard where Sargent was painting. He said, as I approached him, Sargent looked at me, gave a convulsive plunge in the air with his brush and said, oh, what lovely lilac hair. No one ever saw such beautiful lilac hair and immediately started to sketch him where he stood. Not only does he have lovely lilac hair, he also has a moustache that will rival many a Movember attempt. It might be that these sketches eventually lead to this portrait, although it is unlikely to have been painted outdoors. Portrait of Edmund Goss is inscribed to Edmund Goss from his friend John S. Sargent. These two men were introduced in the summer of 1885 by American-British author Henry James, the same year that Sargent settled in London from Paris. This introduction developed into a long acquaintance, if not friendship. In the Edmund Goss archive, part of the University of Leeds Brotherton collection, we hold several letters written over a 30 year period from Sargent to Goss. With his wife Nellie, Goss was well known for the regular Sunday afternoon and supper parties held at their home, attended by many well-known artists, writers and men of letters. These include William Morris, Thomas Hardy, Rudyard Kipling, and John Singer Sargent. Although Sargent continued to paint portraits of family and friends, commercially he moved later in his career away from portraits towards watercolours. He was also an official war artist for Britain during the First World War. 